Hey, what's up guys? John here. About three months ago, I put out a video saying banks are going to zero. Bank accounts are going to go to zero. And, uh, you know, I wasn't just pulling this out of my, you know, pulling this out of my hat. I was looking at what some of the smartest people in the world are saying, some of the most powerful people that are making all the decisions, what they're saying. In that video, I had a thumbnail. It was just me and Klaus Schwab, right, saying a blackout, I think global blackout. And uh, the whole premise behind that video was that they're, they were preparing for something called Cyber Polygon, which is a global blackout where you can't get money out of banks. So you couldn't get money out of banks, utility companies were shut down, uh, no hospital services, uh, basically everything would grind to a halt, right? And in this video, I was really kind of just going over what they were saying. I wasn't you know, giving my opinion on anything. I was just simply saying, hey, this is what the smartest, most powerful people in the entire world are, uh, are saying, what they're preparing for. Could this be something that happens? Well, we're seeing something pretty scary happen in China right now with some of their biggest banks saying that they're not able to get their money out. So their customers that are depositing funds inside of these banks can no longer access their own money. So they can't access their own money. They can continue to have direct deposits put into the account, but they can't access their money. And if this was, you know, a problem for a couple of days or a week, I wouldn't even report on it, you know, but it's been since mid-April. So we're approaching two months where people can't get their money out of the banks, right? And here in America, what I'm wondering is, since we're not really hearing about this story, could we have a situation where we start to see a run of the banks, kind of like what we've seen in 2008, when people started getting really nervous and pulling money out of the banks. But now we're have, we have massive debt levels, right? We have people that, you know, we have a trillion, over a trillion dollars, 1.1 trillion in credit card debt, a trillion and a half in auto loans, 1.7 in student loans, gas is going through the roof, inflation, right? What would the world look like in America if this happened even to one bank? Imagine just let's throw one large commercial bank into the equation. We would have a run on every bank, right? We would have full panic, really, really just, we'd have a different world, right? And I'm gonna share with you some videos, some videos that I found in China of you know the lines, people protesting out front of these banks, people are very, very nervous. And it makes me realize a couple of really important things is one, you wanna make sure you have enough cash on hand to get yourself through, I don't know, a month, two months, three months, six months, ideally, of, uh, of cash. You know, you could food, feed yourself, you have enough for, to fill gas tanks, you know, you can travel if you need to, you can go do something. You know, whatever your monthly expense is, times it by three or six and, and have that cash on hand at a minimum, if possible. If you're gonna invest in gold and silver, you wanna, maybe you're very, very uh, confident that gold is gonna hold value because you know it's been uh, currency or it's a store of value for the last 5,000 years. Odds are it's gonna hold up a hell of a lot longer than, uh, than the US dollar or really any fiat currency for that matter, right? And so maybe you wanna invest in gold and silver. Just make sure you have custodial ownership. You don't have to keep it under your mattress or you know inside of a, in your trunk of the car, but put it somewhere safe to where you have custodial ownership. You can access it. My belief behind gold and silver is if you don't own it, you don't control it, right? If someone else controls it, they own it. So make sure you have custodial ownership of your gold and silver. Here's what's going on. So there's a run on Chinese banks and it's being ignored by the world. In the autonomy of economic crisis, a bank run is the point of no return. I'm gonna leave the link for this article down below. Uh, bank runs occur when people scramble to withdraw cash from banks in fear of collapse. In the worst cases, banks' liquid cash reserves are exhausted. Not everyone gets their money and the banks default. In the grim scenario, which fortunately has occurred in rare history, this happened in the 1930s and also happened in 2008. In Asia, bank runs have also been rare. A run on Japanese banks in 1927 led to the collapse of dozens of institutions around the country. Now, what we have to realize here is that we have fractional reserve lending. So if a bank has, let's say, a billion dollars in, in deposits, they can lend out 10 billion. And if we look at our debt levels that I just mentioned, we have a lot of people that are really, really strapped in debt. So you would have more of a likelihood that these people would want to have their cash out of the banks because you know the world's expensive and they simply don't have any other uh, way to provide for themselves. So they're gonna try to pull money out if this becomes a real problem and goes, let's say, from China, and then maybe it goes to a different country. Or if it happens again, like to one bank here, we could really see this whole um, fabric of society be eroded. There was a banking crisis in Myanmar in 2003, which the country has never fully recovered from, but perhaps since the Great Depression, none has been 
significant compared to what is seemingly unfolding in China right now. The Chinese bank run of 2022 in recent years. It has become clear that the Chinese people are losing faith in financial institutions. There's been anger over what's happening right now. In Shanghai recently, in the collapse of China's Evergrande saw the public demonstrations as residents faced the prospect of losing their life savings used as deposits for housing. Return our money. The Evergrande protesters chanted in Evergrande headquarters in Shenzhen in 2021. The songbook is eerily similar to bank branches in a number of Chinese rural provinces right now. Multiple sources contracted, contacted by Asia Markets have confirmed depositors in these six large banks, right? So these six banks, you can only deposit money in, you're not able to get your money. It's understood the banks with branches across Henan and Ayu provinces significantly or successfully issued announcements in April stating that they would spend online banking suspend online banking and mobile banking services due to a system upgrade. At the same time, clients reported that the electronic deposits on online accounts, mobile apps, and third-party platforms could not be withdrawn. This led to depositors rushing to local bank branches only to be told that they were unable to withdraw funds. By late May, images emerged in Chinese social media demonstrations at the front of numerous bank branches. Asia Markets has verified these images with local contacts. According to one user, Chinese social media platform WeChat, the protest is ongoing, but are rarely mentioned in Chinese press. It has caused widespread concern on the internet, but the media attention is not high. The highest degree of concern is the four banks in Henan. Now look at this. The protest. The People's Bank in China is highly concerned. The present relevant departments have launched an investigation. The People's Bank in China will cooperate with the relevant departments to protect the rights of financial consumers following the public protest and the PBOC statement. The China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission revealed it is investigating fraudulent activity carried out by Henan New Fortune Group, the largest shareholder of the four banks listed above in the Henan province. It's understood that the commission is working with police to investigate the allegations that the group colluded with bank insiders to misappropriate bank funds. So they're saying there's bank insiders and they're tackling all six of these banks. According to a call recording between depositors and police officers, a company named Hina New Fortune Group Investment Holdings Co. is suspected of illegally absorbing public deposits and the amount is huge. Bank runs contagion to sweep across China. Regardless of the cost, the developments raise serious questions about the health of China, China and the regulatory oversight. The more immediate concern, however, is the prospect to see how far this will actually go and if it's going to go to big cities. There's evidence that it's already happening. In one of the mainstream international media articles to report on the unfolding situation, local residents highlighted the seriousness of the situation and the likelihood of it just going and going. Some depositors, such as Exu, have already lost trust in the system. The 39-year-old said he's withdrawn all of his deposits from 10 other small banks that had promised him annualized yield of 4%. Right, another depositor, 30-year-old father, said he placed more than, so this is a 900,000 RMB, which is $133,000 US, right? 133,000 US um, for a 4.1% return. I felt like I was being slaughtered. He said, declining to give his name, he drove overnight to negotiate with banking regulators. Uh, this is crazy. He and This is the money my wife and I saved together since we got married. I had to lie to her that I was going away for work. On a video on Twitter, a video of a large line at ICBC Bank in China, one of China's largest state-owned banks. It's, it's owned by the state and they're taking the money. Right, posted on Tuesday, June 9th, suggested that this is in progress. Translation to English, he reads, the bank card system is locked and these people are here to unlock it, right? Crazy. Blogger Jennifer Zhang has reported major issues with bank with withdrawing cash from banks in Shanghai in recent days. The uncertainty no doubt exasperated by the prospect of more problems coming again. All banks in Shanghai have restricted depositors from withdrawing money. A bank run is about to sweep China. The lack of reporting about the clear signs of the bank run in China is somewhat surprising. As HSBC's China put it, the rise of China as a global economic power has caused concern that the crisis in Chinese banking 
could lead to a worldwide downturn similar to the global financial crisis. While many analysts believe China's banking system is widely immune to the Evergrande crisis, cracks are beginning to emerge and should this bank run intensify, already volatile global markets would be faced with a black swan event even more significant than Evergrande. We all remember Peter Thiel, he was predicting a black swan event saying that you know, they are accepting Bitcoin, they're accepting gold, they're, they're not just only going to accept the dollar, right? And they're, they're storing their gold, taking custodial ownership of it. Here's, here's this video. More lines. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that we're going to see a situation where this becomes uh, a concern? Americans, you know, start to get a little bit nervous that, you know, food prices are through the roof, everything is through the roof, and we all depend on that, you know, piece of credit to uh, to live. You know, I use credit cards all the time. I love collecting points, and you know, it, it's better simply for insurance reasons. You have, there's more flexibility with a credit card. And when you don't use cash and you don't constantly have cash on you, then you put yourself at mercy of that card, right? So I do advise everyone to, you know, pay attention to this because this could be a problem. I'm not saying it's going to be, but it could be a problem. And, uh, you know, the World Economic Forum, all these people, they were talking about this potential problem where there are, you know, problems with banking, problems with utility companies, problems with uh, infrastructure, everything having a really big problem. Maybe this is the start of something, but it's surprising we haven't heard about this. This is mid-April. We're basically in mid-June, two months not getting your money. What would you do? Drop your comments below. Let's have a conversation about this. Subscribe here. If you want to make money online, and you maybe on YouTube, you want to invest in real estate when things hit the fan, you need help with your credit, cashnow.video. That's cashnow.video. Be sure to subscribe to my second YouTube channel. It's going to be an interactive show and a podcast starting this upcoming week. And um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everything is in the banner. And uh, catch you guys in the next video.